Hey guys, Christy here from Dissolve Alive and welcome back to our channel. So this video was inspired by our most popular ClickUp template, our sales tracker. There was a time in my business where I just felt like I never knew my exact numbers and I always wanted to have them at my fingertips. Whether I wanted to see how I was wrapping up the month or the quarter or really trying to hit those sales goals. So I created a sales tracker dashboard, which totally changed my business, but I also thought there's no way I want to manually input every single sale that I have. So I actually integrated ClickUp with Zapier to integrate all of my payment processors to funnel them into ClickUp. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to actually link your ClickUp with your different payment processors using Zapier. Let's dive in. I have four different finance sales tracking apps set up within my Zapier account that track with all of my payment processors. So HoneyBook, Kajabi Stripe, PayPal, and Webflow Stripe, the four places we receive income. And as soon as we receive a new payment in any of these four places, it then brings it into our sales tracker. So here is our um, sample sales tracker. So I'll just kind of show you through the process and then what it would look like when it zaps in here. Essentially, just walking through these zaps, if we go into the HoneyBook Finance Tracker, we have any time a new payment is paid in HoneyBook, then it creates a task in ClickUp. So this is where it goes into our sales tracker template. It has the task name. So we set up that it'll have the project name and the payment amount in parentheses the gross payment and net payment in the description. I used to do this because it, I would have to manually input it, but now you'll see if I go into edit mode that we have, it will now be the project name and then we have the net payment and the gross payment. We pulled those in from the fields from HoneyBook. So then as soon as a payment is made, it's actually going to bring it in here. The task name will always be the project name in parentheses, the gross payment. Then we have the status is going to be what payment processor it came in through. That's going to be automated through that Zap. And then we have the gross and net payments are now able to come in through Zapier and then the month. So that one would be updated. You're just putting in the gross and net custom field, test it, make sure that it zaps into the custom fields. But let's talk about the other four matters. So Kajabi Stripe. Uh, Stripe is going to um, not show the net charge in the correct format. It shows like this naturally. Let me show you. So when I open this up, it doesn't add a decimal. So what you have to add is a number formatter. So let's click edit and show you how to do this. You're gonna click plus format. What's the event? Numbers, continue, transform, and so now let's just go into this block and go through and see what we performed. So transform, perform math operation. The operation is multiply, and you're gonna input that net transaction and then multiply it times 0 0.01. This was $35.63. So adding, multiplying those two things together is gonna give you that perfect decimal. So after you do that, you'll see the output is now 3563. And now if we create the task in ClickUp, what we have to do is in the setup action, instead of putting the net um, like this, so this is 3563, I can edit that now, where this says, um, you're actually going to put this in here and you're not gonna pull it from this, but instead you're gonna pull it by numbers and then output. So now you're gonna get that proper net amount. So again, you're gonna add this block. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one. 
you're going to add a number formatter that's multiplying the net times 0 0.01 and then in the custom field net you're putting the output of that formatter instead of the data that stripe is bringing in so that one is stripe now let's talk about the formatter for paypal Okay, so these two stripes are the same, obviously, because they're both stripes, they're pulling in the data the same way, but PayPal is a little bit funky because what it does is it brings in the operation, it doesn't give the net amount, but it gives the gross and the fee. So in this one, we wanna perform a math operation that's subtraction. So if I click edit, I'm going to set up the action that perform math operation subtract the gross and then MC fee. So then the output is that subtraction, 2006. So then when I create the task, set up the action, then you'll see that in the custom fields, instead of putting that any other number, you're putting the output of that subtraction formatter. So sometimes the PM processors bring in this data kind of funky. They don't give you the gross in the net. You can also decide that you don't necessarily need to see net and you can not even put anything in there. But if you do want to track both gross and net, there may be times where you have to add a formatting block to take that data and make it exactly the decimal amount. Okay, so just wanted to show you that when it comes to editing these zaps, adding the custom fields if it's not giving you the exact number that you need. So we went through three different examples, connecting HoneyBook, Stripe, and PayPal to your ClickUp. Now, here's the beauty of this sales tracker, is if you have different payment processors, then you might have different ones like Thrivecart or any other checkout processors. You wanna connect all the ones you have so that you're able to pull this information, this data into one place, be in ClickUp, and be able to ditch the spreadsheets. So the beauty of this is too, you may be able to get financial reports from HoneyBook and Stripe and PayPal, right, and see your numbers, but this is going to put it so beautifully, which we're about to build into a dashboard so you can see all your numbers at a glance. Okay, so we went through connecting them. We went through the tracker, right? So again, this is in our shop and our system school membership, with all of our templates. And so you'll be able to get the yearly sales breakdown, but then also by month. So by month, it's grouped by the processor, You'll be able to see the offers, date created, gross and net, and that month. So you'll see the filters on here too. Date created is a specific range or the month dropdown is September. And then one other part here too that comes into play with the dashboard is these tags. We also have added tags so that you can say, yeah, this is coming in from HoneyBook, but we have multiple different consulting offers within HoneyBook. So then we can tag, this is offer one, two, three, and then pull that data as well in the dashboard. So sales tracking template, we've connected this to our payment processors. Zapier is automatically bringing in all this data for us so that we can create a beautiful sales tracking dashboard. So I'm gonna walk you through what this is and how we're segmenting the data, and then I'll actually build one with you. Okay, so we have this month's gross and net sales. So at any point you can come in here and say, hey, how much money have I made this month? Am I hitting my goals? Are we on target? Then you can have this year's gross sales, right? So how much have I made this year? Again, are we on target? And then we used to do this year's gross and net, but now we have a block that's all time revenue. So with our sales tracking template, we suggest that you have one per year. And so we have 2021 sales, 2022 sales. So this will be bringing in all of the sales trackers and just summing up all of that data. Then you have this month's sales, so you're able to see a snapshot of itemized, what are those specific sales? And then by platform, so this is by payment platform, HoneyBook, PayPal, Stripe, Kajabi, if you have any other ones, 
sales by month. So, so you can see any trends if any month outperformed others for whatever reason. And then sales by, this says platform, but that should actually say by offer. So that's grouping it by the tags. Okay, so pretty dang cool. Literally one of my favorite dashboards and things that we have built in our ClickUp. Now let me show you how to build this from scratch. Okay, so now I have a blank dashboard. So I'm going to start by adding these calculation widgets at the top. Okay, so I'm gonna click add widget and then do calculation. I'm going to pull from the growth space 2022 sales tracker. Then I'm going to say the field is we are summing the money field gross. We are summing this, it is US dollars. And then one other filter we wanna add on here. And this is how we keep the sales tracker dynamic, is saying that the date created, so Zapier brought this in automatically this month. So just a little stipulation here as well. So these are gonna be the day that the transaction happened, right? So the day the person purchased that thing or signed the contract. It's not going to be the day it hit your account. So there may be a little discrepancy between like your accounting details of when that money hit. This is when the sale actually went through. Okay, so I'm going to add this widget. I am not going to call it calculation. I'm going to say this month's gross sales. You can also say this month's gross revenue, um, whichever you prefer. I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. Let me let that buffer. Okay, perfect. So now instead of doing that all again, grabbing widgets, etc., I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate that. I'm going to call it this month's net sales. And then I'm going to change this field. So instead of gross, I'm going to do money and then I'm going to do net. Also tip for you here, I have two nets here. I believe it is the bottom one. So I'm gonna click save. But sometimes if you have more than one custom field, whether it was a template or you have multiple things called category, um, if it's hard to find which one, you can always go back into that sales tracker or that template. And so I'll say, watch, I'll say sales net. And now when I come back here, I'm going to do money. And then, hold on, let me actually refresh this. Okay, let's see if that will pull in now. Okay, so sales net, now we know this is the correct one. And so why that wasn't pulling in was because I wanna make sure that the date created is this month and press save. So now I'm gonna go back in here. I'm just gonna put this back to net. You can always keep it there just so it's always the same or you can delete it and make sure it's what you want um, just for the dashboard creation purposes. Okay, so now this is this month's net. You can see how they're different. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say this year's gross sales and I'm going to take off that filter so now this is just pulling in the gross sales and it's not saying the date created is, is this month. It's saying that it's just from the whole sales tracker itself. So let me refresh this. Perfect. Now that buffered. So now what you're going to do for the all-time revenue is you can say all-time revenue. And in this case, what you would want to do is instead of doing just the 2022 sales tracker, you would make sure the whole folder is checked and that would be pulling in from all your sales trackers. Now, I only have one for this tutorial in that mock space. So obviously that's going to show the same number, but if you had multiple sales trackers, it would be pulling in everything. Okay, then let's talk about this, this month's sales list. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add a widget task list. I'm gonna call it this month's sales, pull in from the sales tracker, group by status. You could group by anything you want, but the status will bring in the um, saying which platform it's coming in from. And then again, we're gonna say date created is this month and then add widget. So what you're gonna see here is you're gonna see that this pulls in assignee due date priority. We don't wanna see that. Instead, I'm gonna hide these. And what I do wanna see is I wanna see the date this was created. 
And I also want to see the gross amount. Okay, so there we go. And you can also sort this to make sure that it's coming in in order. If there were different dates, then it would show there. Okay, so you have the date created and the gross amount. You can also add any other data points if you want to add net there or anything like that. So now as the months change, right, we're in September, this is just going to say, okay, now when we're in October, it's going to reset and say that the sale was created this month. So you don't actually have to come in here and adjust anything. It's going to be updating in real time. That's the beauty of automations and setting these things up to do the work for you. Okay, so now let's pull in these charts. So if you want to do custom, now note this is not available on every plan. You're going to have to use the business plan to have custom calculation widgets and pie charts and all those things. So something you want to consider if you haven't upgraded yet. Also, you can always use our code to sell the life for 20% off your first year. So pie chart, I'm going to say uh, sales by platform. And here I'm going to select the location, 2022 sales tracker, group by status. So all statuses, right? We have HoneyBook, PayPal, Stripe. And then the value, we don't want to do task count. That's just going to say how many sales there were. But instead, we want to do that gross amount and then add this widget. So I'm going to adjust this, bring it over here, and then give that a second. Okay, so now you can see when I hover over it, it'll tell me exactly how much I've gotten this year, 7,947 from HoneyBook. 2,344 from PayPal and showing the percentages. So you can see what platform is generating the most revenue. And you can also say this is just from 2022, but if you wanted this all time, you can also have it on that folder level. So if I wanted to duplicate this, I could then say sales by offer. And instead of grouping it by the status, now I'm going to group it by the tag. So all the tags that are in there offer one, two, and three. It's now going to give the breakdown of how much each offer has generated me. And then the last one, we want to do a custom bar chart and say sales by month, location, sales. X axis is going to be, let's just double check on this. Hold on. X axis is month, Y axis is gross money. So drop down month. Let's see if this is the correct one. Y axis, money, gross. Okay, and now we are going to add that widget. Okay, so no results. So again, I can go and do the change the name of that custom field to sales month, or I can just try and check the next one. I believe it was the second one. Let's see. So save. Perfect. It was. So now I'm seeing those. Now you can see that you can't really see them in order. Hold on. This is blocking it. So what you could do is sort manual and then change those around. So this is September. And then once you change them, you can put them in order and then they'll stick. So that is it for creating a sales tracker dashboard. You can see how we brought in that money and those transactions through Zapier brought them into here. This sales dashboard is dynamic. You are going to have your numbers at your fingertips whenever you want. So I hope this video was helpful for you and gave you a good intro to Zapier and how powerful this tool can be. If you want all the ClickUp tutorials at your fingertips, make sure to subscribe to our channel and also check out our system school, which we have an entire course just on ClickUp as you're getting started and all of the plug and play templates that you could ever want. So many more than we have listed in our shop to set up your ClickUp for success. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.